Hey folks, welcome to Fish People Music. My name's Lottie and this is the Seymour Duncan Vapor Trails Delay Pedal. And if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time and have a feeling of deja vu, it's a feeling of deja true because I have talked about it before. My previous video was, hey, I've just bought this pedal and isn't it awesome? And this one is, this pedal let me down in the most annoying of ways, when I needed it, and what am I going to do about it? So, a, a brief explanation is that at the last gig, last two gigs that we played, um, I actually did a vlog of them, uh, that's somewhere down there. First uh, song of the first night, went to turn this on, and all I was getting was just the unaffected guitar sound. Previously I'd accidentally plugged my um, guitar cable into the side output which is the the insert and the, the sort of the output for just the delayed section and it seems that doing that had caused problems. I mean it has done that a couple of times before when I've been experimenting with it and it sorted itself out over time but I left this turned on through the entirety of uh, Hey Do I Know You and just had really thin guitar sounds when it's meant to be big, delayed, swirly, crunchy stuff. And then when we got to 3i, which is kind of post-rocky, uh, stark guitar lines that really don't pop unless it's got the delay on it, turned it on and still nothing. Um, yeah, so for the second gig, I was able to use a backup pedal of mine, um, an Aural Dreams Breath Delay, which is a fantastic pedal, it just doesn't have the the chorus on, on the delays. So now that we're back from playing these gigs and I've got a bit of time, I'm going to take a look and try and sort out this pedal once and for all. Okay, so here we are, here's the pedal, and the first step to taking it all apart is to undo the four crosshead screws underneath. This will give us access to the circuit boards and be able to see what's going on. And once the battery's been removed, we can flip it over and start taking off the control knobs. We need to do this to get to the nuts that hold the circuit boards onto the chassis. These screw onto the collars of the potentiometers and so we need to undo them to free everything up. Two of these knobs, the black ones, are held in with little allen key grub screws and the transparent one is held in with a flat headed screw. Fortunately for the opaque control knobs there's actually flats on the pot shafts to be able to line them up properly when we put them all back together. And then of course you have to take the, the insert jack collar off as well. And I haven't undone the nuts on the top of the pedal because that entire piece of bodywork slides out along with the main circuit board. And to be able to get the clearance that we need we have to take out the switch circuit board as well. And then once everything's taken out after a bit of a fight we can remove the daughter board from the main effects unit Put the effects unit to one side and take a look at the insert jack. This is where I think the problem lies. And taking a look at it with my multimeter, I can see that there's actually continuity across all three pins. Which isn't what I was expecting, but I also know that it does sort itself out after a while. So I'm thinking if there is a problem with one of the fingers, it's just taking time to settle back down. So... Knowing that there's continuity on all three pins, I can plug in a jack into the socket and test again afterwards to see if it does return to zero like it should. get a beep here, nothing here, and a beep here. So yep, it's definitely that sensor finger that isn't making the right connection. So it looks like we're going to have to replace the socket and see if this fixes it. 
it probably will because it's obvious that it's not working right. And so here we go with a sped up desoldering montage. And to be honest, it's a bit of a pain to desolder. There's an awful lot of layers to this circuit board. And for some reason, the solder just didn't seem to want to come out of the holes. It's obviously lead free, which requires a slightly higher temperature. But aside from that, it just seemed really difficult to get anything to behave. So I've had to use a little bit of mechanical persuasion on it. And that seems to have done the trick. And now that we've got the socket taken out, we can properly clean up the holes and get them ready to insert the new component and resolder it and hopefully get everything back to working as it should. And now everything's all ready and soldered, we can do a quick check and make sure that we have continuity and we do across all three pins. Fantastic, okay, it's ready to go. Time for reassembly. And at that point, my batteries ran out in my camera, but reassembly was kind of the opposite of disassembly. And so if you watch the video from this point backwards, um, then you should be able to see it going back together. Or maybe not, but you get the idea. Um, it went back together without a problem. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh Fantastic. So yeah, now it can go back in the gig bag and I can put my oral dreams thingy back in the pedal garden where it belongs and keep gigging with this one with the cool um, chorusy things that I really like. Although I think I'm probably going to make a little cap to go on the, the insert jack just so I can't accidentally stick a lead in there again because uh, nobody likes it in the wrong hole when they're not expecting it. I mean, um, because it'll be easier to uh, remember not to use that particular socket. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, hopefully this is uh, the last I'm going to have to work on it ever again. Um, I mean, I'd hope so. It, it was a fairly expensive pedal and it's a uh, quite a, a decent name brand but for some reason I don't know uh, the componentry just let it down hopefully it's a one-off and other people don't suffer the same thing because it's a great pedal but uh, yeah it works now um, I'm looking forward to using it at the next gig which is Stoke maybe I think yeah I think Stoke until then um, I'm going to sort of put it through its paces in the rehearsal room, and uh, fingers crossed, that's it. Right, well anyway, um, I'm just repeating myself now, so I'll say thanks for watching. If you liked the video and the other videos that I've made, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you don't like them, don't. But then if you don't like them, why are you still watching this one? And if you really like the video, you can click the like button. Um, and I'll see you in the next one when I promise I will actually get around to doing some more work on that old Gen synthesizer. It's just, it's big, I have a day job, and it takes a while for components to come through the post because Maplin doesn't exist anymore, and I can't just pop down the shops to buy a bunch of capacitors. So yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheerio!